Hi there, welcome to a 1.2 uh, update to the 360 video Gaussian splatting prep tool. So if uh, you make a purchase, you'll get this as your download, and you'll get a demo file if you choose that version, and there's a readme there as well. So we double click the software to run it. You can change languages, um, and all of these have got tooltips as well. Uh, please let me know if there's any issues with those. Um, it will persist that language, so when you restart the application, you should remember what it was doing. Uh, so with the demo video, um, just to show you a little bit, there's a few sort of things to consider with that. Basically, it has to be a lat long video, natural. Um, so edit it to the area that you want to do um, the capture for. Don't have stream on because you get lots of enough frames. The important thing is to name it correctly as well. Um, for whatever you want your frames to be named, everything is derived off the video. Uh, you can browse to it here. We can just drag and drop to there. Uh, nothing will happen uh, other than the, the duration will be set and uh, the resolution. It kind of reads the file until we do some extractions. So I'm just going to do like five frames here. Um, there's a couple of things to go over uh, in terms of the video extraction and then we'll go on to the splitting. So when I hit extract frames, it will create a subfolder with underscore frames at the end of it and the preview will load up as well. Uh, these images are directly um, matching the resolution of the video. So you'll see we're 5760 by 2880, uh, same resolution there. Um, you can see it exporting a frame every second, so shooting uh, as I'm walking, always keep moving uh, when you're shooting and, and keep the camera above your head as well. You'll see that there's some nice steps. If you look, watch the bins, you can see they don't change too much between the extremes. If I'd set this to say every five frames, then what will happen is obviously I've walked further. So the position is further between each frame. So you see there's a big jump now between the bins. Um, you don't want to do that because um, if they will fail to align, basically. So if we set this back to one second, let's do us. Uh, let's do ten. Uh, a couple of other little points to do here. Uh, I, what I tend to do as a workflow is I'll prepare uh, it, test it, and then I'll do the full length. So rather than having to remember how many I can do for that length at that time frame, you can just click Add Max Frames, and that will maximize it for the length of the video basically every second. 10. Um, yep, yeah, I shall just export those now. Um, so, splitting wise, you'll get the same thing where it creates a subfolder. And everything is derived from our presets. Um, as soon as you change anything on the preset, it will switch to custom. And that custom value will persist between versions of when you open it and close it. And the reason for that um, is that. Obviously, we, we've moved away from what these default presets set to, and it's a customized one. To go through uh, the values that we have here, um, I'll show you cube maps. So I've recently added on this version, uh, you can just have a split. There's a cross and a line type. So you see the split folder's created now. Um, and that's just going through each frame and then creating a cube map from it. And then you can see that steps through the bottom at the top and the top at the bottom. Uh, and then the cross version, or sorry, the strip, sorry. Um, if you need the individual frames that make up that, you can just put this checkbox on and then you'll get the strip and all of the separated frames as well in case you need to work on those uh, independently. So yeah. Cube map's not really into the Gaussian splatting, but I just added it as an extra feature. So I tend to go with a quick preview version. Uh, what you can do is turn off the overlap while you're setting your numbers, if you want to do it that way. And so when you change through these values, you can see the splits uh, are changing there. Let's go back to this one. Um, you can turn overlap on and off as well, and I'll kind of take you through that. So what I'm going to do is probably just go down to two frames to quickly show you so this splitting will actually oh, and just because it will take too long between this version. So I'll just hit the all key and see what messages you 
there. So just do it. Yep, yeah, two frames. Right. So um, on this default, what's useful with the preview is that you can uh, see whether the masking's in the correct place. So if I turn the masking off here and I extract these, so I split these, so it's only correct 16 and very quick. You can see uh, it's RGB in the name and it's just the frame split out with the amount of overlap. So you can see if I move the overlap down, as I'm increasing that, it just gives you a visual representation. It's 45 around that kind of area works. Um, if I turn off overlap and export these images, again, it's trying to stick to one to one to the extracted frame. So you'll see I'm folding 40 there. And then if I turn it on, and also you'll see this is almost like you know the cue back method, the frames will butt up against each other. But then when I turn on the overlap, you'll get a bit more of a distorted image, and the resolution has increased as well because essentially it's expanding the field of view. Um, to take into that overlap account um, but the splitting is the same so then between each image you can see like the house is visible there and there's the overlap the same it's the frames of those houses are visible there um, yeah so what I'll do is quickly go through the full workflow um, set the total number of frames. Let's do our essentially test version, uh, test alignment. Um, and then we'll just go back to the overlap, turn the masking on. So when I have masking on, you'll see black circle. So this line across here gets turned into a sphere, and then obviously it gets converted like that. Um, if I open one of these, okay, <laughs> it's going. Uh, let's try it with GIMP. Uh, I'm not putting black in the RGB, just uh, black and white mask in the alpha, basically. So it's just to show you that. Um, because you can, in post shot, turn off whether it counts or not. So if I use the alpha there, turn off, you can see it's only affecting that. We're not losing any data, basically. Okay, so that split's finished. Uh, then we'll go to a reality capture. So it's got a new session open here. You can either just do a control A and select all, um, or you can just go up on the split folder, drag it in. See, I've got my eight images there, and I'm just gonna hit align images. I found settings wise, sometimes it works better. It just really depends on the location captured. Uh, I've got my image overlap at high, and then I've also got my sensitivity set to high as well. Though so I've played around with those a little bit, and I get slow. So how it works. Another useful thing is in the alignment image to uh, yep yeah, 2D. There's this mask setting, so you can view the files in there as well. Uh, so frames are exported. Great, all the frames are aligned, and you'll get this kind of cluster of cameras basically because they've used the overlap to align themselves and then align to the features at the same time. So using the numeric keypad, we can set this tab uh, and then under tools and the scene 3d we can just clear region so we just remove the box that gets automatically put around and then while selecting this main component because uh, sometimes you get smaller ones you want to set the ground plane and in this one I'm just aligning it up a bit better here I always find this easier to kind of do in reality capture but you can do it in post shot as well um, and then use the numeric keypad switch around you can see there's I think that's the garden actually. That's the one there. That in the middle, because the rest of the scene over here. Um, and if you actually, a good tip is if you move further away, it slows down the sensitivity of that rotation. So then I've got my point clouds there. I go back to the alignment tab. And then under registration, I'm going to click that. And then I'm going to name this the same thing as our video. Copy that. And you're picking from type, it's number one here, which will be 
place to save a CSV. Here are the settings there, it's all standard. And then the next thing we need to do is export the point cloud. Uh, same thing, I'll put the name in there and you're picking the PLY there. And one main thing on the PLY is to make sure you set export ASCII as false. So if we go back here, I've now got a PLY CSV, which essentially is a list of all the cameras that are being used here, and then the source images themselves. So if I bring up PostShot, I can just drag these on there. And there's a few settings I tend to use. Uh, one is I don't want to downsample images because they're already quite small. Uh, and that might increase the resolution. Leave anti-aliasing on, and I usually check on the treat zero alpha as a mask. Uh, and then you just hit import, and then this will start training immediately. So there's no camera alignment because we've done it in reality capture. And so you'll see this within sort of 10 minutes or whatever, you'll know whether this is bad or not. Obviously, it's not going to do the whole environment um, because we've only done our 10 cameras and we didn't set it to max. But once you look at this and you feel like you're pretty happy with it in terms of what's being generated, you can go back to the tool, just select add max frames. And you can see now we're going to generate 784 files based off these 98. And again, you just extract the frames and then split all the images. So that's just a quick rundown of the 1.2. Uh, please let me know uh, if you have any comments or desire for any particular features or anything like that. And I hope this has been useful. Thanks.